Okay, cool. Um, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Adam. I work for Red Hat, and today I'm going to present about Fedora Silverblue, which is a Linux desktop OS. Just a cool tech I like. Um, I'll start with a question. How many of you use Linux on your laptop? Oh, okay. A lot of people. Um, have you heard about Silverblue or Project Atomic or CoreOS? OK, cool. So this will be something similar, um, but on your desktop. So let me try to show basically how traditional Linux distribution update works, right? Let's just try to update this from orange to green. And what you, what you see is just like it's updating package by package. And there, are, there might be a few issues with this. So what if it breaks in the middle? What happens? Or like what if it breaks in the app? Like, when it's finished and something doesn't work, like how do you go back, right? You would have to um, restore a backup or something. So this is just something that's happening like with normal Linux distributions, including Fedora. And now let's have a look at how RPM OS 3 works. And RPM OS 3 is a technology that powers um, Silverblue, and also we're powering um, CoreOS, which will be something on the server. Um, so with this, I just basically download a new image on the side. And when I'm ready to go for it, it's just like I reboot into the right image. And what happens here, like if something goes wrong, I can just super easily go back, right? So I can just switch between those images. And there's much, much less room for failure. So that was basically all my slides I have. And now let's have a look at a few demos. Um, so basically, what we just saw, let's do for real. So I have a um, Fedora workstation, or actually Fedora Silverblue, which looks like this, just a GNOME environment. So let me just start the terminal. And all right, there we go. And I think we can start with an upgrade. So to do a system upgrade, I will just type command RPM OS3 upgrade, and it downloads the new image on the side, does things, and it'll be done in a moment. All right, I can see like new packages that are in the new image and whatever. All right, this didn't change my system. This is just like on the side, and when I'm ready to go to the update, I'll just reboot. So I just do rebooting. And this is the boot menu that you see. Um, and there are two entries here. Um, the, the, the top one that like, ends with 20 in there, that's the new update. And the other one is the system I was running. So when I just choose the first one, Fedora is booting up, and I'm here. So let's have a look what happened. So again, I just open a terminal. And to see the status, I just type RPM OS3 status. All right. And I can see two entries, and these are the very same entries as we saw in the boot menu. So the first one is the system I'm running, and the bottom one is the previous system. And I can see the version, which is the same as in the boot entry, um, base commit, and GPG signature. And then there's something called layered packages and local packages, which I'll cover later. Um, all right. If for some reason I don't like this update or something is broken, I can just roll back. So I just type RPM OS3 roll back. And it just basically switches those two images to make the other one the default in a moment. And then I can just reboot and be in the other one. So if I type RPM OS3 status, I should see what actually happened. So yeah, those are switched. This is the old one. This is the new one. And I'm actually running the new one. There's like a little dot in the left that indicates it. But I'm happy, so I just do roll back again. And what it does is just like switches them back. So I can just like keep switching. But again, this is not changing the environment I'm running. I would have to reboot to actually reboot into the new change. All right, so RPM OS3 status, and I'm there. So this is basically how upgrades work with RPM OS3. And these are the commands you want to know. So upgrade for actually doing the upgrade. Um, status for seeing what's the status, of course, and roll back in case something happens and you want to go back. Um, so these were upgrades. And let's have a look at another thing. 
toolbox. Um, so if you have a system that's like immutable and that you don't normally install packages into, you still need to do your development somewhere. And Toolbox is basically like an isolated development environment that feels like a native system, but it's in a container. And let's just have a look how it works. So again, I just open a terminal. And I just type Toolbox to see what happens. And it showed me there are three subcommands I can create, I can enter, and I can list. I have already run the toolbox create, which creates the environment, so I just do toolbox enter. And it basically opens a shell, which looks as my native system, even like the home directory is there. Everything feels the same, except I can now install packages as I would normally do on Fedora. So let's have a look how to install a package with DNF. I am installed the SL package. Who knows the SL package? Excellent. So like when you're working with your system and you, for example, do ls to see what happens in your what's in your directory, you can make a typo and maybe type sl. And then like you have a nice train on your screen. Um, all right, so package installation works um, as you would expect. And this is how you can basically use the system the usual way. But it's in isolation. So like, if something goes wrong, you just destroy it and create a new one or have multiple for multiple purposes. So that's toolbox and two commands. Again, toolbox create, toolbox enter to play with it. Um, all right, I have another thing, Podman. Who heard about Podman? Cool, like half of the people. So who uses containers? Um, or <laughs> almost everyone. Docker? OK, so this is something similar, except it doesn't run a daemon as a root because it only manages processes, and it can do rootless containers. So again, a quick demo. So guess what I do? I start a terminal. And the CLI is the same as Docker, basically. I just type podman instead of Docker, and everything works as I know. So just to do the simplest thing possible, I just do podman run dash dash rm dash dash it to have like a interactive environment, Fedora 30 bash, and yeah, Fedora 30 container is running. Nothing special, um, just exiting, trying 21, 29. This is basically how Docker works, except, as you noticed, it, I don't run it as a root. I don't have any special privileges. This is a rootless container running on my system in my, in my user space. Um, I can also do other things like mounting a file, and let's just have a quick demo just to prove that it works nicely. So I just create a file, hello txt, just type hello, and I'll just mount it into the container the same way as with Docker. And I can use relative paths, by the way, which is sometimes nice for development. Um, And now I'll try to see what's in the file. Oops, what happened? I can't see it. OK. Guess what happened? Anyone knows? Yeah? SC Linux. SC Linux, that's right. Yeah, Fedora ships with SC Linux by default. But Botman supports it out of the box. So the only thing I need to do is to, when I'm mounting the file or the directory, I need to hit colon Z. So I get the right SC Linux labels. And now everything works nicely, securely, in a rootless container. OK, so this is Podman, basically like Docker, except it doesn't run the daemon as a root, and it can do rootless containers. So it's less resource demanding. But you have the same CLI for run and build, and you can run containers on your system. OK, and last thing I have, um, flat packs. So again, immutable system. Everything runs in containers. So what about GUI applications? That's what we have Flatpak for. So this time, let me open a Firefox and show you something called FlatHab, which is a, a repo with many different applications. And there are things like Spotify, even Steam. I played Civilization V on my laptop using Flatpak. So there's a lot of apps that you can actually install. All you need to do is just like quick click setup and 
it'll guide you through. You just basically enable the repo on your system. I'll skip it here, but I'll show you how to install applications. So it's managed using GNOME software, which is the GUI application for um, installing apps on Fedora. We're basically in GNOME 3. And let me install Blender. So I go to the graphics, and I click on Blender, which is a 3D um, creation suite. Um, and I'll just do install. And that was super quick. That because I can edit videos. Um, it takes a little longer, but you get there. And I can launch it. And it looks and feels exactly like a normal GUI application, except it runs in a special type of container in the flat pack. I can also see it in my system menu, so everything works as expected. All right. And that was flat pack. So Flatpaks run on Fedora by default. You just need to um, enable the repo, which is on flathub.org. And then you can use GNOME software to manage your application. And it works like a phone, right? You have your system separate, your applications separate, and they update independently as well. All right. And that's basically all from me for today. So we just talked about these four things. Um, Silverblue, of course, your container desktop OS. Um, RPM OS3 for managing updates. Toolbox for your containerized development environment, Podman as a replacement for Docker, container runtime with no big fat demons, and flat packs for containerized desktop applications. Um, thank you for coming. If you want to try Silverblue, you can just get it on this URL. You can follow the project on Twitter, and if you really want to, you can follow me as well. Um, thank you.